the fire element is is this energy of upward and outward. Um, the springtime is pretty much up. And if we're talking about food, I always bring in asparagus and leeks, which we, I mentioned in the spring talk that we had, which is this upward and this fire element is about an expansion. So if you think of um, pineapple or like dragon fruit or even um, vegetables that grow up and out, like all the beautiful salad greens, that's the energy of the season. Um, and so it's about embodying and capturing that through our food, but not overdoing it, if that makes sense. Um, it is, you know, full sunshine, it's it's warmth and heat, but again, not overdoing it. So if you want to have some spicy food and chili, it's it could be a good thing. And mm -hmm. that's when a lot of people enjoy it. And they love, um, you know, things like Thai food and um, Vietnamese, it's like spicy foods and mm -hmm. all the curries and things like that. It is a good time to have it um, because it encourages more of this expansive nature. You sweat, it helps you cool down. There's um, many factors to incorporate those foods. But if I want to bring it back into this idea of balance, we have to, this is a season to really watch the word balance more than any other season so that you don't overdo the parties or overdo the spice or overdo mm -hmm. certain lifestyles um, because it also affects the, the organ of the heart and small intestine, which is the organ pair in this season, um, which is easily um, disturbed. Um, and we get it disturbs the shun, it disturbs our mental capacity, our emotional capacity, and people tend to get a little bit um, overly excited or easily excitable um, and a bit chaotic and manic. So that's not good either. So mm. we have to be very careful in every season, but this one is a really easy one to tip over. Um, I, I see and I also feel in, uh, in my experience with the five elements. So the idea of overexcitement for some people is a bit weird, potentially. They're like, no, being happy yeah. and full of joy is good, but you can overdo it. Um, yeah, well, the like, I mean, everyone does associate constant upward and outward motion with um, with summer, but forgetting that the the yin yeah. the yin chi of the of of the fire element has got a, such a calm serenity. Mm -hmm. It's it's so, it's on cruise control. Mm -hmm. um, it's relax. It's relaxed. It's it, I mean, it's a, it's like a Sunday. You know, it's, a, it's like a summer afternoon nap. You know, it's mm. like swinging in the hammock yep. while reading. Um, but I feel Christmas and New Year, especially, they hijack that that yep. time. Yep. And I mean, and I don't know why I'm surrounded by so many Sagis, so many <laughs> birthdays around at the moment. And you got it. I mean, and you a lot you of birthday parties. <laughs> and this, the and as you said, that excitement. It's the thing that I I oft, I think for our our like where we are in the southern hemisphere, I think it really throws off the entire other cycle mm -hmm. more than more than anything else. That. And then in, you know, getting around to autumn and not able to transition down and welcome yeah. and mourn the fact that the summer's gone. Yes. You know, to everyone, um, if you can, yeah, quality, not quantity. So if you can get quality celebration and upward times where we get really excited and then yep. ensure that you come down and cruise during this month, this month, these months would be, I think that's a good, good way to go. Yeah, I, you bring up a good point about afternoon naps. Something I don't do. It's just not in. It's not in my DNA. But I should, and um, I'll just quick, briefly mention a few imbalances. So how do you, how do you know your fire element is out of balance? And then we can talk about foods to support that. Mm -hmm. um, you get heart palpitation, like actual physical disturbance of the heart. You get anxious. Um, you get in, insom insomnia. There's a lot of sleep issues that. Um, surface uh, during the height of summer for people you get obviously more easily um, sensitive to the heat outside as the temperature is rising mm. um, you get nervous you get forgetful <laughs> as well um, so there's a lot of agitation and like this chaos um, wiriness to the fire element um, as well so but as you said if you're balanced and you, you can have a nap you can slow down in the height of summer um, and you take the time for a little bit of of cooling down that fire uh, heat and excitement which is really really key um, you know what, just what you're saying what it point something points out to something to me like because quite often people find themselves in situations where they're like well that's all that's very really, like very well and easy if you to say that but I can't because of this. I've, I've made, you know, I've got this many kids or I've got, you know, like I'm, yep. I'm, I'm in this phase of my business. I've been really watching myself kind of say that and mm -hmm. then watching the decisions that I'm making that are going to affect mm -hmm. my next two years or three years. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, you've got to become a custodian of the fire, the yeah. future fire. So it's like, mm. oh, 
well, at least I'm going to learn from when I've bitten off more than I can chew. And I'm going to ensure that I make choices that when I get around to summers three years from now, that I actually do have greater capacity to get into that serene flow. Yes. I oh, love that future fire. Um, I, I wrote down a note here as, as well to, which kind of ties in with that future fire idea is like energize, but not exhaust. So you want to have the energy in summer, well, the whole year round really, and, and that flow of yin and yang and, and, and that balance, but um, not exhaust. And we tend to, in modern day society, just go to the edge and exhaust ourselves and then try and catch up and take herbs and eat food and sleep. And then you really um, depleted yourself to another level and it's mm-hmm. harder to catch up so but on that note there are foods that can help um, in the season and um, for those that are familiar with the, the flavors and the five elements the five seasons the five flavors it's one of um, bitterness um, and not many people like to hear that <laughs> because nobody likes to eat bitter foods but uh, in Chinese cuisine there's a lot of um, bitter and, sp- and spicy uh, foods that can they don't have to be like, you know, eating something really obviously bitter or spicy, like a whole chili or um, like, uh, I don't know if you've had bitter melon in Chinese I was just cuisine. thinking about bitter melon, yeah. The ku gua, oh, it's like, I used to hate it. And it's a really weird looking food, a vegetable mm. as well. But it is the classic um, vegetable um, in Chinese in summertime. There's a few others, but that is a classic because it just, it goes straight to where it needs to go in the body and it does its job and you feel great afterwards mm. after you've had it. And there's obviously ways to cook it so it doesn't taste so disgusting. But um, yeah, so you're looking at some um, bitter and spice. So as I mentioned a little bit earlier, a little bit of, of chili, but it's not, if you, I'm not a big chili fan, but you can have other spices that, that make your food um, taste good. You can go you know, to Japanese, Chinese, Indian, Thai cuisine and borrow from their um, uh, condiments list. Spice rack, yeah. Spice rack, Condiment, yeah. Condiments list, yeah. Yeah, and, and herbs as well, like Thai basil and, and all those beautiful um, flavors um, as well. And there's a reason I wanted to explain as well why they have those, in, especially in tropical places in Southeast Asia, is to cope with the season. It's pretty much summer all year round there. So they have foods and herbs that, um, and spices that help with that. Um, so that's important to st- st- just to start thinking about oh different ways of eating in different uh, times of the year because most people that I meet eat pretty much the same all year round and so mm. I'm, I'm always encouraging like explore different flavors explore different vegetables spices um, not every day but maybe you know once a week cook something different or or, or um, borrow from different cultures so the the main aim of food therapy in, in the fire element or in the summertime is to um, cool hydrate and um and enjoy your food as well, because I don't want people to become too, too worried about, um, you know, cooling, the, cooling themselves and, and having certain ingredients. Um, so I'll mention a few of those ingredients that support that, but then I'll also talk about um, the digestion, because it's really important that we don't uh, overcool the body. Um, I did that when I first started doing Chinese medicine, and, and it was in summer, and my TCM doctor was like, oh, the cooling food. So I overdosed on some of these foods. So I'll mention things like zucchinis, melons of all types, watermelon, um, rock melon, um, mint, papaya, uh, chrysanthemum is a very popular. Yeah, drain, it, drain from the face. Yeah. Yeah. Just cool the body and get yeah, exactly. So there's too much heat coming up. We want to cool the body, the whole body, but um, mm. from the upper half. Um, cucumbers are also fall in the melon family. Um, and then the bitter flavors can come from bitter melon. If anyone hasn't heard of bitter melon, Google it because it's fascinating. It's a really wrinkly looking green thing and scary on the inside with seeds, but as I said, highly nutritious. It's the most bitter thing you'll ever eat. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on a Western, um, it's probably a lot easier to associate with arugula or rocket. Mm-hmm. That's got that nice bitter um, quality to it. And look at the shape of, 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 a, of rocket and arugula leaves. So that's something good as well mm. to incorporate. Um, so those are nice cooling, bitter flavors that you can start to add to your salads or your um, stir fries or your soups, like a nice zucchini um, soup. Um, I like to make it with leek. So you can still use your spring vegetables. You don't have to ignore the green good stuff that we talked about previously um, but just starting to add more variety because this is the most abundant time of year where we have you know in the the farmers markets or in the fruit and veg shop you have so much choice so really start to have more variety in your meals 